It's finally here. The NCAA tournament is upon us. Happy Thursday. More importantly, happy March Madness. Woo! We made it. Carter Elliott's in the building. Uh, this is our final full episode of the week before the first weekend is over. We'll return on Monday to break down everything that's happening. Uh, we are going to spend the rest of our week content-wise focusing on all the previews and recaps for all these beautiful, marvelous college basketball games. Cartel, or should I say Ryan Gosling? How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it is a globe too. I didn't know. Were you asking? I did not ask if that's a globe behind you. Oh, okay. My, I misheard you. That my Mac upstairs is a little bit of an older model, so sometimes the sound gets a little bit muffled. But uh, I, I'm doing great, Gregory. I'm ready to get to the games. Um, I know I said it before, but this is our time. If I wasn't doing this, if I wasn't doing sleepers, the level of locked in I would be for these first this first two days and this first weekend would be astronomical levels. Um, I'm I'm extremely excited to fire up the game. Michigan State starting it off first thing, first game of the tournament. Really going to set the tone, I guess, for where my mental well being is going to be. But uh, I'm I'm very excited to finally actually get to the games being played. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. This is going to be super fun. Um, going to be just a blast. We have so many games put together that we put for the Discord. Uh, the bracket contest can be fun. We're paying out like $1,000 for all five of the contests that we're doing. Uh, we discovered that we're making money now, and we just had to have like a meeting on that. That's new. We've never done that before. Yeah, we got QuickBooks. <laughs> Watch <That's cool>. out. <laughs> uh, by the way, why are you upstairs? Why aren't you normally in your basement for this? I am, but you know what? I wanted to switch it up because I really think that people don't think I have a house and I'm getting oh, sick. Okay. All right. Yeah. A lot of slander, uh, a lot of things going on. Also, I, I I think I need to make a quick statement about this. Uh, the commenters, they're not alone. My wife is extremely infuriated with me that I leave things in the background of our recording. Uh, it drives her crazy and I'm going to be better about it. So for anyone who comes to see the vacuum in the background, that might be moved shortly. Uh, yeah. she, she's not a fan. You, you did a great job. You're you're so on top of removing things from the background. The first thing you said on this episode is, did you see that globe behind me? Right next to that Michigan State sign. Right next to the checkerboard art pieces. And whatever that thing on the left is that I've never seen before. It's a headband carrier. <laughs> like, you just can't avoid it. This is You're so authentically you. Do you see life. the backpacks right here, too? I do. You're just you're one of one cartel. I truly love it. Uh, why are you on Twitter complaining about being compared to people you look like? Because I think I think there's a lot of lazy comps going on out there. Everyone's just throwing out the light skin guy that comes to their mind. Like let's, I, I was just expecting a little bit more creativity. OK, uh, of the four people that people have been saying you look like that you mentioned in the video, which one do you think you look the most like and which one do you think you look the least like? The Sean May one's pretty on pretty on par, I must say. That one uh, picture of Darren Williams where he's wearing the super baggy jersey looks like you. Bro, that profile picture that I got right now, that <laughs> like that you. one is actually spot on. And like I also didn't know that Darren Williams like broke his jaw and that's what caused him to like get in shape, like because he couldn't really eat solid foods. Didn't know that. I'm definitely in the market for someone to break my jaw now. Mm. Dead ass. I'd be too weak to do that. Otherwise, I would offer. I th I think you could. You got sneaky, sneaky forearm power. I have sharp fingers, but you, that's you about do. it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Well, was there a reason you picked Ryan Gosling as the non light skin person that you believe you look like? Uh, only because you showed me that Ryan Gosling uh, was an Oscar performance. Uh, yeah. He did. He shut yeah. down the Oscars, made it a Gosling concert. Yeah, that was in my head at the at the time of making the video. Got it. Okay. Uh, Idris Elba, another one. Yeah. No, handsome fella. Yeah, you seem to be comparing yourself only to men who have been named the sexiest man alive. I mean, well, who would I be if I came on there comparing myself to ugly people? I just think you look a little more like Luke Combs than Ryan Gosling. I'd be fine with that. He has a beard. Would you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, Norlander did the ask every coach who their favorite musician is a uh, couple, couple bad coaches choosing Luke Combs this year. Uh, shout out to Dusty May. 
<laughs> best choice with Rod Wave, and he released his playlist too, Elite Playlist by Dusty May. It's got it's got range, it's got everything you need. It's got a lot of a lot of Rod Wave in there. I really like Dusty's chances in the tournament now. That really helped me decide he might put Boo in hell now. Yeah, that might be my uh, future head coach. By the way, if you believe the rumors right now, there's a he's the name at the top of the board for anyone who knows anything in Michigan right now. So we'll see. I would like Dusty. Okay. All right. Should we get to the show? What's uh, your YouTube comment of the day? Oh, oh sorry. Fire. No, no, no. Excuse me. You have to address my uh, Kevin McCulver's. That I mean, that was a, that was a pretty good nickname. Also, someone called me Demetric Beans and Rice. I think it was. <laughs> uh, I think Dion called me Nigel Pack. I don't know. I guess like Lunch Pack. Um, Kevin McCulver's is is really good. I give you credit for that. That that was special. I was really proud of that. It was four minutes after I watched your video and uh, I was trying to make a Jackson Kohler pun so I could compare you to a white guy. And then I realized Kevin McCuller is opting out of the rest of the season running from the grind. And it reminded me of you and I landed on Kevin McCulver's. Okay. To the uh, YouTube comment of the day. Uh, this YouTube comment comes from uncle Fetz and i picked this comment because it's one that I think provides a little bit of knowledge that I didn't know before. And I love learning. That's a lie. I don't love learning, but this comment's cool. Uh, the region is called the Mountain West and basically the Rocky Mountain Corridor from Montana down through Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and probably finishes in Arizona, New Mexico, although those might be considered Southwest. BYU will have more fans because the local LDS population will show up. Plus, there's just a massive size difference in the schools. Thus, many more alumni for BYU spread across the country I like Duquesne's story, but this will not be an upset. Hmm. So just a little bit of geography lesson for you there. I think I don't think that certain schools that are in like that mountain area like being called West Coast schools. I think that triggers Got them. Got it. Yeah, I guess they're not near the coast. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't like to think about anything west of the Mississippi. Uh, other than California. I'm interested in California. I'm interested in Oregon because like – I want to go to the Nike uh, headquarters and I guess Washington's fine. Eli tells me it's great. Uh, I won't ask you to name Eli's last name. We'll just move on. But anything that's not a coastal West coast state or Western state, I'm out on. I don't need any of the Montana's or the Dakota's or anything in there, to be honest with you. What about Texas? Where does that fall? Texas is South to me, which is its own set of problems. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, too much mountain talk for my liking. Let's move on to the Discord. Uh, hey, a crazy couple of days in the Discord once again. We said on yesterday's episode that uh, we're setting basically records of people joining right now. Um, I'm going to shout out a bunch of other names that I see. And by the way, I might be missing some here, 100%. Uh, we we're busy. That That's the nicest way I can put it. Uh, I think I've worked more in the last three days than I did at my entire corporate job for four years combined. Uh, that says something about who I was in corporate America. And it also says something about my love for this, but uh, yeah, a bunch of people that joined that I don't think we've shouted out yet. Uh, Izzo's friend, Jake is here. Holden Fidua is here. D crump three Cobster. Uh, James dot D Kristen Winningham, John boiler in the void, Lindsay three, four Oh three D Smith. O mill 61. Did I already say Jeff? I don't know. There's another Jeff, uh, Brent Ivan T Blizzo, Ryan, the lion, but better. And this Ryan, the lion is a Michigan fan. Love that. Uh, Noah V and Sparty for life. AK short 40, uh, C pod, the goat, another Jeff. And now a brand new, new Greg, just Greg, uh, shout out to all of y'all. Those are all the new users in the last 24 hours. And there's probably going to be some people that join in the next 24 hours that wonder where their shout out is. I'm recording this at 3 41 PM Eastern time on Wednesday. So, uh, if you join after that, you miss your cutout or uh, your shout out until next week. Carl, we are at 250 Discord members as of today. We weren't even at 200 24 hours ago. How do you feel about it all? 
Feeling great, man. I love to see the community grow. Uh, it's also like getting a little bit more diverse too, I think, I, which I love. Like there's a heavy Purdue contingent, a heavy Illinois contingent, but we gotten like some other teams that are getting involved, which I really like to see because I like to get representation from every college team in there. And I think we're working towards that. Uh, so I love to see it. Yeah. Just people who love ball talking ball. Also some people who love you talking you and uh, probably some people who hate me talking hating me it's a best of all worlds here i really love it uh and if we get to 300 i'm getting a tattoo i have no to excuse me tattoos i have none uh if we get to 300 before the end of the ncaa tournament i'll get a tattoo we have 250 have, have i ever asked you what where you stand on needles i am not afraid of needles i don't i don't okay. like them but i don't mind them like like a shot doesn't throw you off or anything like that come on okay or how uh, how how are you like pain tolerance wise? Do you consider yourself a guy that has a high pain tolerance? This is the thing. You know my stance on illness, right? Mm -hmm. Be it's mentally all. be mentally tough, okay? Like respond. And I know I said that a couple months ago, and the universe really really stuck it to me. We both had some cold, some big sicknesses in the next coming weeks. Uh, you know what I did? I drank some water and I put on my big boy pants and I got through it. Okay, uh, a needle. Of course, there's a time and a place for a needle. They can help. But uh, no, am I like, a, oh, oh, no, a needle can't do it. All right. Let's scale it back, Mr. Beast anti-vax. Um, but what about pain tolerance-wise? For the record, I'm saying I'm pro-vax. Like, go get the needle if you need it. I, I know, Gregory. I know. I, the, the Kevin McCulver thing is still sitting in me, and I got to get my get back eventually. I'm workshopping things in my head this whole episode. So stay tuned. Okay. Answer me about the pain tolerance thing. What pain? Well, how's my pain tolerance? Yeah, like, are you like good? Like, you know, like I think extremely high. Okay, because tattoos can tattoos can be painful at certain points. Yeah, I assume so. Okay, I just I just want to let you know it's no walk in the park. Okay, tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Like, hey, tough guy, you're not I that got, guy, pal. I got a couple of tattoos. It's not that easy, Greg. Okay, <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll see. We get to 300. We'll see. I hope I don't have to see for the right. I don't want to get a tattoo. Don't want to do it. But uh, am I a man of my word? Yes. So if we get to 300, I will get a tattoo. All right. To the comments from the Discord. Join the Discord link in the description of this video. $9.99 a month. We did have some people ask about that, by the way. Join on a desktop or a laptop or on the internet browser on your phone. Just don't do it in the Discord app on your phone, and it'll be $9.99. It's like 13 bucks if you try to do it in the mobile app. Why? Because Discord takes some fees. Don't do it that way. Do it the other way. Here we go. Dane Game starts us off and says, if Doug McDaniel goes to Maryland, becomes a first-team All-Big Ten honor student that plays all home and away games next season, would he be your favorite player again, or would you be bitter about it? Is that, is that my question? Is that directed at that's, me? That's got to be for you. I'd be a huge Maryland fan. You'd be a Terp? I'd be a huge Maryland fan if that happens. And I don't like myself for admitting the truth on that. You just, you don't have Terp in you. I go where Doug goes. I like, he is, he's mine for better for, you don't abandon your son when things get tough, right? You find out your son's a drug addict. Oh, you're not welcome back for Christmas. Like, no, come here, son. I'm going to get you some help. We're going to get through this together. And I love you. So that's how you feel about Doug and his academics? I love and respect Doug and uh, the pioneer that he is for academia. Coop says, if you could guarantee a title this year for your respective teams, pretend Michigan is in. That hurts so much more than you know, Coop. I know you didn't intend <laughs> that to hurt, but just adding parentheses, pretend Michigan is in, is the meanest thing anyone's done to me in weeks. Uh, how many subsequent years would you be okay with missing the tournament before getting frustrated? So win a national championship this year. How many years after that would you be okay with missing the tournament before you get frustrated? Four. It's a lame answer. It's a bad answer. I'll, I'll give you the correct answer. Uh, one. One. If, if you're a championship program, you don't miss the tournament. One. Win, win a natty and then go do it again. One. I'm not like 
No, there's no like, oh, it's okay. We missed the tournament because we won that. No, no. Make the tournament. Be a good program. That's what it is. Uh, my program is not a good program, by the way. So I get like it sounds stupid for me to say that. My program's in shambles. Shambles. It's horrible. We had to run the bad man out. Whew. Coop says he's convinced that anyone who thinks Purdue is boring to watch has not watched Virginia. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you right now, Virginia is not boring to watch. Virginia is just awful to watch. Yeah, they're just bad. This is bad. Just bad. Uh, Tony Bennett can still coach, though. I would like it if he ended up in Michigan. I know a lot of people think I'm crazy for that. The only, the only, po the only thing I'll push back on you on that is I don't know if Tony Bennett. Is, he's got a little bit of that old guard in him. Like I, I think he, I don't think he understands how to navigate some of the things because the roster he constructed this year was brutally awful. Tony Bennett's dip right now reminds me of the beeline dip after the 2013 title for the, the appearance, the runner-up appearance. Like, ooh, ooh, two or three really horrible years, and then he, like, figured it out five years later. I think uh, – Yeah, but weren't, but weren't at least those offenses and defenses good or something? Not, Anything not good? Really. Michigan okay. had some injuries. That's the only part of it. But, like, I, to okay. me, th this is just a bad batch of players. Gotcha. He, he needs to get new players in. We'll see what happens when uh, – well, maybe he'll leave. I don't know. There's rumors he'll leave. Burner605 says, I hold on to the idea of teams that win the title usually have a few pros. Doesn't mean they're good NBA players, but they are NBA players. I feel like not that many of the really good teams this year have multiple. Your thoughts? Uh, I, I mean, the multiple word, I think, is holding some some weight there. I, I think that all of the national championship contenders, like picks that people would you know, put to win it all, have NBA players on their team. Yeah, at least one, usually. Yeah, like yeah. Purdue, Edie, Kentucky, hella options. Houston, Jamal Shedd, UConn, hella options. Even like a North Wait Carolina. Wait a second, Jamal Shedd. Jamal Shedd is going to be a really good NBA player. We don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I think Tugler's their pro, and he's not there right now. Hey, I, Jamal Shedd is going to be going to play a long time in the NBA. I don't know if he will. I hope he does. I like him, but I I don't think he's getting drafted. I think he's like a two-way guy. Ooh, I think he's a first-round pick. He's small, man. He's really small. Guy that leads teams, plays defense, shoots the ball. Like, I guess good if, guy, like, if, Houston, if, culture. If Frank Mason can do it, I guess. But he just, to me, he strikes me as just like good college guard. Uh, Brandon Paul's AOL account says, what are your favorite nicknames for opposing school slash teams? For example, calling Duke puke, Indiana losers, or, uh, his personal favorite per don't not trying to stir things up with Purdue fans. I respect the program, but that's a top notch nickname to throw shade on a school. I, I'm going to show my colors here. I guess I don't have like any type of name for Michigan that I like you. Like I don't do the Walmart Wolverine thing. I don't really have anything for them to be honest with you. Maybe that makes me a bad fan. I know a lot of people think I am a bad fan. So, I think uh, Walmart Wolverine is a good one. I I don't really use these terms frequently or ever. Um, I don't mind the Duke puke one, but only because I envision Riley Davis saying it and then giggling to himself after, and it just cracks <laughs> me up every time. Uh, Rowlett Texas Boiler says, "What officials have been so bad they have no right officiating any games in the tourney?" I'm gonna go first on this one, and then you can chime in. I this I'm exposing myself here. I do not have a clue like what personal officials are because I think if you're looking up scouting reports on officials and you have beliefs on certain officials have certain skill sets or have things against teams, you are not the type of fan that I want to be personally. I respect you being the type of fan you are, but uh, I am not ever going to be like a that official you that official stripes are stripes to me i don't need names i don't need need faces i know there are like people feel a certain way about teddy valentine people feel a certain way about courtney green that's that's not ever going to be me yeah I, I feel the exact same way greg took the words right out of my mouth there um also tim donahue's my hero <laughs> i'd like a mount rushmore of your heroes at some point if you don't mind if i was a ref the calls that I would miss to see moments and make things happen would be generational. Yeah, it would be. Chris BK says, going to the MSU game on Thursday, 
thoughts on me wearing my number 11 jersey to the game? Is this a bad look because of initials, or could this be the start of something special for AJ? The last time I wore it, we beat Michigan in the Big Ten tourney final in 2019. So is it an actual Hogarth jersey, or is it just an 11 jersey? Wasn't Appling 11? Oh, excuse yeah. me, wasn't, wasn't Redacted 11? Yeah, also wasn't technically Aaron Henry 11 for the first, like, one or two years, and he went to zero before he left. I think that's true. It might have been true. I don't remember what Henry was to start his career. He, um, he was 11. I know for a fact he was 11. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I would assume – if you have an 11 jersey, I would assume you did not get an 11 A.J. Hogarth jersey. If you did, we'll reach out and make sure you're okay. Uh, I don't know. where. Yeah, wear the jersey. I like wear jersey. It. Yeah, I, I'm all for just wearing whatever jersey you want. Outside of wearing redacted jerseys, I'm I still never, I will never ever forget going to Columbus and seeing someone rocking a Keith Appling jersey literally like a week or two after the thing, like the murder happened. That's just a crazy move. Well, and like, so there's to me, there's levels to this. Like, if you're just wearing a Michigan State 11 jersey that doesn't have a name on the back, yeah, wear it, whatever, fine. When we were in Columbus, the one card's talking about, this man had a lime green custom ordered jersey that had the name Appling in big letters on the back. And he wore it literally like four days after Keith Appling was accused or not accused, arrested for murder, for murdering an elderly woman. That was absurd. Like the the concept of being the fan and thinking, oh, this happened. That's funny. I'm going to wear my Appling jersey. That's insane to me. The other one was we went to uh, Moneyball. In the summer, and that was insane too. Three days after Miles Bridges had been again arrested, turned himself in or whatever for uh, the the accusation of beating his baby's mother, we have a dad and like a toddler in a Miles Bridges jersey with bridges on the back to Moneyball in the summer. It's like... Uh, uh, no, a, a, a Hornets jersey, too, by the way. It, 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 yeah. it wasn't even a Michigan State jersey. I'm not laughing, but like, wow. And you, you know that parent is just like, here, three-year-old, put this on. We're going to go support Miles Bridges in public right now. Like, at a certain point, like, maybe draw the line on fandom a little bit and maybe don't send horrible messages to your future generations. But... um that's not a Michigan State specific problem. It's just the only two incidents I've ever encountered that with, and both happened to have Carter right there with me. So, yeah, wear wear the jersey. Just don't wear jerseys in those settings. Malik Perry has a flurry here. I'm going to read them all. Uh, do you think the transfer portal should start after March Madness is over or not? This is more so for Carter. I noticed that JJ Taylor is in the portal. Is that a player in your opinion? MS, you should try to get. This is for Greg. Who would you want as your new coach? And five players from the transfer portal. Uh, okay. A couple things. I I do think it should wait till after March Madness, in my opinion, to open up. Uh, th- there's there's a kid from Pepperdine who entered last week and he already committed to Bama, like seven, like literally six days later. It's just crazy to me. I think it should be waiting thing. The fact that it's going crazy right now, right before March Madness, I it's I don't know. Call me old man yelling at clouds. That's just how I feel. Uh, in regards to JJ Taylor, uh, I do not I do not want him. I think that JJ Taylor will be a basketball player that can get stats on a team, but he will never do things that contribute to winning basketball. Mm, Interesting. I want to call this out with fans in general. This is, again, not Michigan State specific. It kind of is Michigan State specific, actually. You guys are doing this thing right now where, uh, like, it's the first wave of portal players, right? And let's be real about it. All the players entering the portal this week, losing players, bad players. Like, could, uh, they, could they go somewhere and help? Yes, they could. But like these right now being three days into the portal and being like Maxime Renu is the number one player in the portal. Wait two weeks and he's going to be the 72nd best player in the portal. Like I disagree. I disagree with that. But I, I know I know where you're going with this. I agree with that somewhat, but not with the Reno thing. That dude's actually really good. My point on this is it's incredibly stupid of every Michigan State fan who is going up every time any player enters the portal and quote tweeting it and being like, really hope Michigan State staff reaches out. This is a great one. He would make such an impact. No shit. Every player in the country would make an impact on every team in the country. 
You don't like your coach doesn't even use the portal. And I get you're trying like you hope he does. You have a game in 24 hours. Go support that team. Stop lusting over Stanford centers who your staff is never going to reach out to. Like there's no connection there. So like I understand it's different. Like Trey Townsend, Trey Townsend. Good one. I think Michigan State might actually reach out to Trey Townsend. Uh, Caleb first guy. I think Michigan State might actually try to. We don't need to do every single random player that's in the portal and be like, wow, he'd look great in green and white. Hope the staff look. just can we get some self-awareness on this? Like let we're me, three days let me, into this. Let me, just let me do my part, bro. Just let me do my we're part. Just, we're three days into this. I don't need – at this rate, we're going to have 720 tweets that he would look great in green and white, and you hope the staff reaches out. Like – I need you to put some respect on Raynaud's name. He's fine. He's he's better than fine. That dude is that dude is nice. He's gonna be at I I he's gonna be at probably North Carolina next year. I think he'll be at West Virginia next year on an eleven win team. Can we make a bet? Sure. We should honestly that'd be a fun offseason game for the Discord. A portal where will this player go portal game? Like the Ooh. moment they get in, you gotta submit and then that'd be really fun. I, I like that. Guys, he joined the Discord. We'll do fun stuff like this. All I – oh, uh, and Malik's question to me, who would I want as my coach? Five players in the transfer portal. I don't have any players in the transfer portal to name for you that I want. I, I have no idea. I'm going to let the portal solidify a little bit. No players that are currently in the portal are players that I want on my Michigan team next year. Uh, the coach that I want right now is John Calipari. I know I sound delusional for that. Uh if John Calipari is not an option, which he's most definitely not an option, I would like Dusty May or Jerome Tang. Personally, I would be happiest with Jerome Tang. I don't like playing the transfer portal game for my rival team, but I will say this. I think that Kane and Carlisle would be a really, really good fit with y'all. And I believe y'all were in his final five, if I'm not mistaken. Why, though? Like, what does that even mean at this point? I think he's a really good point guard. Okay, but like, like Michigan doesn't know who their coach is and is going to have zero returning scholarship players, and we're talking about this guy would be a good fit. Like we we don't even know the fit. <laughs> Not a good fit. I think he's a good player. Like you get okay. him, you could you could put players around him. I think he's a he's a top twenty five kid out of high school. He just made yeah. the mistake and went to Stanford. You're right. I just I I can't do it. I don't know how you I'm guys lust, have the energy. I'm lusting over everybody. They a. Hey, Stoyakovich's kid that just entered the portal from Stanford too. What's up? Like, I, just, head. I don't know how you have the energy for this. All I do is sin says, who are your picks for mid-major coaches to play their way into bigger coaching jobs during this year's tournament? Guys like Shaka Smart, Holloway, Dusty May, et cetera. I have two. You got any ideas? Uh, I think the obvious one is Drake's coach, like package deal, maybe even like DeVries and Tucker DeVries for another year. The other one, I'd probably give a shout to. It, I think it's a. I think there's no chance that it actually happens, but I do think there's a world where New Mexico goes on a massive run and somebody opens up the big bag for Patino. Mm. That'd be fun. I would like to see that happen. Um, Pat Kelsey was the first one that came to mind. Um. Just like if Charleston were to make a Sweet 16, I think he'd immediately get hired. He's kind of hovering as a good option anyway. I like your Darian DeVries shout out at Drake. Uh, yes, his son has one year of eligibility and his son would be a superstar. A high major could basically immediately have a good season if they hire that package duo. Really skeptical what he would do outside of that, but I guess we'll have to see. And uh, just a random shout on this one from me. This isn't a mid-major, but if Northwestern found a way to make a Sweet 16 beating UConn in the process, Chris Collins would get a huge job immediately. That'd be bad for you, wouldn't it? I kind of want Chris Collins. No, I'm saying that if he does that, he's going somewhere else besides Michigan. Like, oh. if, if Michigan wanted to get in, I'm saying Michigan would have to go up against other people. He loses yeah. first round, you'd think you'd still get him if you wanted him. Yeah, that's okay, though. I'm okay with that. Also, Nico Medved is the obvious one here. If Colorado State makes like a Sweet 16 run, Nico's going to get a big job pretty quickly. Uh, Fam33 says, this is a public service announcement that from now on until Saturday evening, Bluffs is officially renamed to Eastern European Warehouse. No further comment at this time. Fam spoken. 
PSA, I fam speaks, I listen. Go Green 07, are you drinking the Coach Izzo Kool-Aid like Rafael Davis is? Uh, no, I, I, I love my dog, Rafael, um, but him acting like this team isn't what it's been the whole season. And that that's just going to change because Izzo flipped the page in the calendar is not Kool-Aid that I like, I like sipping on. Yeah, I, I did not listen to the clip that I saw Rafe, uh, speaking on why he believes Michigan state's going to make a run. Um, I saw that Rafael Davis is pushing Illinois and Purdue in a national championship game and also Michigan State in the Elite Eight. Uh, I also am aware that Rafael Davis unfollowed me on Twitter a couple weeks ago. I was pretty sad at the time because I really like Rafe. I'm getting less sad the more I see that he has three Big Ten teams in his Elite Eight. Yeah, he does work for the Big Ten Network, you know. Got to cash those checks, correct, right? Like, isn't that the cat's move? Not, if it was up to me, and I was with Big Ten Network, you would see Northwestern in there. You see Nebraska in the Elite Eight. You see all of them. I just, I don't. And look, I think Rafael is phenomenal. Let me be extremely clear. I think he's really, really good. I love his analysis. He's honestly my favorite person on the Big Ten Network. Um, I think he's great. With that said, I, I don't know how those guys can do the whole like pretend the Big Ten is elite thing constantly. I don't know. But then again, we we're, we can pretend whatever's elite. Just tell us. We'll, we'll do it. Lyric says, uh, I'm an old dog, so this is an obvious yes for me, but I'm curious what you guys think. Is the portal destroying college basketball? No. It's not. It might be destroying college sports, but I don't like singling out college basketball like that. I think there's a lot of truth in the stuff that Saban has been saying about just the way it has affected players and how they're wired. But um Got to deal with the rules. That's what it is. Coop said we could have had Robbie Avila versus Eric Dixon, Kadari Richmond versus Devin Carter, or Rick Pitino versus Jerome Tang. But instead, the Committee of Morons gives us the still-moving corpse of Virginia versus Mountain West clone number five. You'll take Isaac McNeely and you'll like it. It's a little disrespectful to Colorado State. I think the Mountain West is going to do well in this tournament. Coop says if you do a recap of this game, I will like it several times so that I can then unlike it several times. Yeah, good. go ahead and do that with the Virginia Colorado State recap. It's up on the channel. Why not? Jubui has a meme here. Uh, what would you do if you had a time machine? I don't know. I probably would have met my grandmother. And then Ty Berry is in the bottom of the picture. I miss Ty Berry. I miss him too. Purdue Boiler 83 says, is Michigan winning this tournament? It's the uh, graphic that Ant and our boy D Turp, who is a paid Discord member, put together of March Midness. Uh, it's a bunch of bad basketball teams with Michigan as the one seed. I, well, like, I don't, if they're winning that, does that mean they lose the game? Cause they're worse. Uh, who, who are the teams in that? Uh, I'm trying, so I can't even pull the graphic up. You can't see it very well. This West Virginia's uh -huh. in it. Vanderbilt's in it. Uh, Georgetown. 10, I think. I don't know. I can't see them all the way. It's tough. Out of those teams, Michigan actually might win that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I can't answer until I know what win means. Um, guy says watching Virginia or Chinese waterboarding. Chinese what? Well, is that different than regular waterboarding? I am unequivocally anti-waterboarding, so I would rather watch Virginia than have waterboarding occurring. For our, next, for our next sleepers bet, the loser should have to get waterboarded. Okay. I don't know why you'd want to waterboard yourself. Augie says, Greg, who would Michigan have to hire to make you believe in Michigan basketball again? Uh, if they hire Dusty May or Jerome Tang, I think they will likely be a good program again quickly. If they hire Nico Medved, I think they are going to be terrible, very mediocre. If they hire John Calipari, I would buy tickets to the Final Four immediately. Um. Yeah, that's about that's my belief tiers right now. If they hire Bryce Drew, that's another one that's been thrown around. I will reconsider everything in a negative way. Bryce Drew, really? Yeah, it's the the lists are weird right now. Boiler Con says, "How do we feel about Mountain West fans victory lapping the ACC after that Colorado State dub?" More power to them. Let them know, Mountain West. Yeah, I love a good victory lap after you get victory. 
Yeah, I love it. Relentless MT says the world outside of Purdue can say whatever they want about it. It's recent tournament losses. Fans can cry foul about any Boilermaker player or team success as these fans deny their personal deep-rooted jealousy of a stable program that develops its own and has success year after year as of late. But make no mistake, the entire program collectively has not shied away from its failures or goals and has not shrunk in the midst of a trash heaped upon them. As the hurricane of change wrecks destruction upon this beloved game and threatens to drag it into a deep, dark abyss, the eye of calm is over the sport for six weeks as competitive chaos swarms hearts with Cinderella's and dramatic finishes and it just may be the whole of college basketball needs Purdue right now more than anyone would care to admit and it may just be the Purdue's destiny to rise up prove what can be done the right way with hard work patience and perseverance and lead those who choose not to sell their souls to the abyss through the remainder of the storm and however slim it may be provide hope that college basketball will retain its own soul in the process boiler up hammer down okay two things here gonna look directly at the camera um Respectfully, college basketball does not need Purdue to win it all. Um, it'd be great for y'all, but let's not act like college basketball is yearning for the Boilermakers to cut down nets. I, I don't think that's the case. Not saying people hate you. I'm just saying that's not usually what people are waking up saying to themselves. Also, to the Purdue players, staff, anyone who's factoring into March Madness, I hope you know y'all have a lot of pressure and say – on a lot of Purdue fans' mentals. Uh, this team needs – these fans, they need y'all to do something in this tournament. They 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 need it bad. So just know you got the Boiler Nation on your back. They need y'all. I want to say thank you to Relentless MT for the comment. Uh, it was very well written, and a lot of thought went into that, I'm sure. Uh, my mother, I love her. Love her to death. She's never made me a snickerdoodle or whatever you – whatever Scotcheroo. You, Scotcheroo. Never had it. Uh, my mother, I love her, love her to death. She does this thing where she will have something rather innocuous happen to her, like, oh, walk by and see a dime on the ground, or oh, d- d- do you know that it's Tuesday today? And she will somehow attribute some meaning to something that was just going to happen regardless to feel some added sense of importance and push toward what she wants to believe in her heart that's a thing that is going on with one very unique fan base right now that just feels very self-important sometimes and that's okay i love my mother and i love this fan base but it's unique to my mother i haven't met anyone else in my family that does that haven't met any other fan bases that uh think it is needed to save the sport for them to overcome their obstacles and failures and the evil slander of opposing fans who cry foul it's just basketball it's just just basketball just just win 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 the game or lose the game malik perry says 100 percent. just carter you can't say anything about me being proud of my team when you're only around when we're winning but not when the diehard fans are always there so salute to you, and you can't be a chameleon. You have to grind to blend in, little cat. Ouch. Is there any college events you two have ever wanted or want to go to, no matter the sport? This is also from Lee. I want to go to the Maui Invitational. Yeah, same. Uh, that's all. That's for all the videos and Missing Friday. It's a small price to pay for all the videos we're getting. Uh, thank you, Malik. I love you, Malik. Boiler in the Void said, is there any way you guys see an outcome where Duquesne wins a game or two in the tournament? Because I think they have a real chance. No. I can't see it either. I'm sorry. Purdue Boiler 83 says, can you imagine the live game threat if Purdue and Illinois met in the NCAA title game? That'd be the end of the Discord. I, I, yeah, I need them to get to a Final Four, and then I need one of them to lose so that the other yeah. one isn't there. Yeah. Ryan the Lion says, remember to shout out Holden Fetawood. He joined, but he didn't get a shout out yet. That was just timing for the record. I didn't miss him. When I went back bef- uh, while we did that earlier this episode, uh, he joined right after the previous day's episode was recorded. So shout out to Holden. Appreciate you being here. Hyena Scar says, Psycho T was quoted as saying, Longwood isn't big enough for UConn. Your direct thoughts is bigger, better. Did he actually say that? I don't know. Bigger is better. I'm going to leave that to you to be the expert on. I think that's all the comments today. Uh, appreciate everybody in the comments in the Discord. This was a really fun week. What's going on? 
Uh, my Adam's apple sticking out farther than it usually does is concerning me. Mm, I've had like a lump on the side of my throat this week. I don't know what's going on with that. If you actually do, you should probably get that checked out. And it's, I was being dramatic by calling it a lump. It, but. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it might be in flared lymph nodes. Mm. Um, so just make sure you monitor that the next couple of days. Are, are you WebMDing me right now? What's that? I mean, I I have a little bit of a just I'm a big WebMD guy. Like, so if anything actually happens, I, I pretty much know about it. I'm not saying I am a doctor, but like I'm like a step below, I guess. What ha what's an inflared lymph node? I mean, it could be for a couple of reasons. It could be maybe it's like a allergic reaction to maybe something you ate that's different from your diet. Uh, maybe all the talking that you've been doing on the podcast, the previous we've been doing just very, you know, strenuous on your throat and your lymph nodes, um, just causes an irritation of them. And that irritation can cause like lumps and things like that. But it's just, it's fine. Just something you want to monitor moving forward. Okay. Appreciate that, Dr. Cart. Let's get to the show today. A couple months ago, we did a segment called the final four readiness assessment, the final four readiness checklist. I went through the top 25 teams and every other team in the NCAA tournament. And I, Put them back through the March readiness assessment now that the season has ended. Tally up how many teams can make a Final Four. For those that missed the original segment, the theory was this. There's seven categories, and in order for your team to make a Final Four, you need to have five of the seven categories checked off. We backtracked this. Last year's Final Four was wild. There were four teams nobody saw coming. All four hit the threshold for this. And uh, going back previous years, it tracks as well. I went back about five years. Every team that made a Final Four, you could track to these seven criteria, five of seven or more being true. So I wanted to quantify this because the first time we did this, we had categories that were like, do you trust their starters? Do you trust their star? Do you trust their coach? Do you trust their coach in March? Those are obviously subjective categories. So I put a little quantification behind these today. And then I ran the numbers to every team in the tournament. And I got 14 teams that can make a Final Four. I would like to share my findings with you. Please. So the updated categories are, do you trust their starters? Meaning they have a clear identity that transforms itself into the results of being either a top 10 offense, a top 10 defense, or a top 40 team in both. Basically, you either need to be elite in offense, elite in defense, or good enough in both. That would tell me that I trust your starters. Do you trust their star? Meaning, do they have an NBA player? Do they have an All-American? Or do they have their conference player of the year? One okay. of those three. Do they have a legitimate star? Has their coach won their league before? That, to me, tells me we should trust your coach. Has their coach won their league before? Has their coach made a Final Four before? Tells me, should we trust their coach in March? Do they have a bench guy who, A, either averages eight points a game, or B, is a future star that obviously will when given a bigger role. Mm -hmm. That's the only subjective one. Category yeah. six, uh, these two are taken straight from the book from the first time. Six straight wins after January 1st. I need to see that you can win six straight games. The mental hurdle of winning six straight games. And then uh, do you have two top 75 road wins? I need to see that you can win on the road. You can win in hostile environments. You can win in weird places. Those are the seven criteria. 14 teams qualified. And we could, I don't think we need to go through everyone, but we can if there's one you want to hear about. Uh, and then a lot of teams you would expect got cut. So could I could I give you the ones that got cut first? Yeah, before you do that, did we do that you only had to have six out of seven? Or did we say you had to have seven out of seven? You need five out of seven. That's the threshold. Five. Is it's that actually, what it is? It's, okay. It's harder than you think. And maybe we might be able to do like you need six out of seven or seven out of seven to win it all. But this is just make a final four. Are you ready okay. to make a final four this run? I, lo I love the readiness. We might have to like actually patent this or something. So here's the teams that got cut. And they, we could literally backtrack any of these just to like prove that they didn't make the cut. Arizona is cut. Iowa State is cut. Duke is cut. Illinois is cut. Creighton is cut. Oh. Alabama. Alabama is cut. BYU, Wisconsin, St. Mary's, Michigan State, New Mexico, Kansas, and Texas Tech are cut. Those are the top 25 teams. So I think, uh, how many was that? 11 top 25 teams? 13, something like that. Those top 25 teams have been cut from can you make a Final Four run. 
some of the, there's surprising ones in there. Yeah, do you want to flesh any of these out? I don't think we need to do all of them, but we could. We could look no, at them I, the thing is, I think I know what most of them probably are. Like Arizona probably didn't have the road wins, right? Uh, I can check. I can check on that right now. I didn't jot down the specific notes. T- Tommy Lo- and I get Tommy Lloyd hasn't coached a Final Four. He did win the conference. Uh, they didn't win seventy five games. Tommy Lloyd, Arizona does have six straight wins. They. Do have two top 75 road wins. They beat Utah and Colorado. So that's two. They uh, do not have a final four. They do have a coach who won his league. So it's three Mm -hmm. and four. They are top 40 in both offense and defense. Mm -hmm. Four. So they must. That means they didn't qualify for trust their star. And that means they didn't qualify for a bench guy eight points per game. Uh, let's see, you know, when we did that before, KJ Lewis and Jaden Bradley and those guys kind of factored into that. So we with the, is the, the eight point criteria just is gonna cut things out. We had to add some criteria. Had okay, to add some criteria. Yep. All right. I think that that I'm fine with that because I think it cuts out a little bit of subjectivity, which I think caused the stir when we first did this. So and unless uh, it was Caleb Love named the Pac 12 player of the year, because if he was, then Arizona is in. He was named Pac-12 player of the year, yes. Was he actually? Yes. Are we allowed to overrule that because we don't trust him? I trust him, though. That's the thing. Okay, so then Arizona has to be added. Arizona has been uncut, and they are now in the top 15. I had Arizona not getting that point because I don't trust Caleb Love. All right. Well, I I knew knew Zone should be in there. See, you you fact-checked the right one here. Uh, the others I think are more self-explanatory. Let's do Illinois, just for example. Uh, Illinois is elite in offense, so they qualify there. Do you trust their star? Yes, Terrence Shannon was uh, an, a future NBA player. Has their coach won his league? Yes, Brad Underwood has, three for three. Has he made a Final Four? No. Do they have a bench guy, eight points a game, and or a future star? No. So you're three for five. Do they have six straight wins after January 1st? No, they do not. That's where they fall short. Mm. Illinois oh. had four of seven. Got it. I think I'm trying to think the because uh, most of those did make sense to me. The last one I want to do before we get into the teams just for fun though. Can you do Creighton for me real quick? Oh, your national championship pick? No, my final four pick. I thought you picked him to win a national championship. No. Oh yeah, you the Bleacher Report stream. They were just your top team that could win a title, but yeah, that was yeah mismatched a little bit. Okay, uh, Creighton. They are top 40 in both offense and defense, so we trust their starters. Uh, I do trust their star. I'm going to give that – this is kind of up in the air, but I think between Alexander and Shireman, they have someone who will play in the NBA. So that's yes. uh Has their coach won his league before? Greg McDermott has, three for three. Has their coach made a Final Four before? No, he has not. Do they have a bench guy averaging eight points a game or a future star? No, they do not. Three for five. Do they have six straight wins after January 1st? No, they do not. And uh, they do have the road wins. So they were four for seven. Mm, okay. Sure. A lot of the, the six straight wins killed a lot of teams. Yeah, it does. That's and tough. the coaching. Six straight wins and coaching killed a lot of teams. All right. So let me reveal. We have 15 teams now that we added Arizona. Here's the 15 teams who can make a final four this season. UConn, Houston, Purdue, North Carolina, all four one seeds. Auburn, Tennessee. Marquette, Baylor, Gonzaga, San Diego State, Kentucky, Colorado, Ooh. Arizona, and then two that are outside the Ken Palm Top 25. There's two teams that qualified. Florida Atlantic and Utah State. Ooh. Ooh. Purdue fans, hold on to your seats, Purdue fans, because you might get Utah State in the second round, and this might be more dangerous than it appears on paper. Oh, Gregory, I like this exercise. Okay. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. I think there's some obvious ones in there that I don't have any any more questions on. Um, I think the one I do want to ask about, you know what? Yeah, let me get Utah State breakdown there. Utah State breakdown. Uh, let's make sure I got this here. Okay, so t- top top 
40, do we trust their starters? We had to give them no because they're not top 40 defense. Uh, mm. tr- trust their star? Yes. Great Osibor. We absolutely yeah. trust star, superstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, has the coach won his league? Danny Sprinkle. Yes, he has. He won his league at Montana State last year. So two Ooh. for three. Has their coach made a final four? No, he has not. Two for four. Do they have a bench guy averaging eight points a game? Yes, they do. Uh, I will give you his name in just a moment. They had a really balanced. I remember looking this up. They had like seven guys who. I was going to say, yeah, I, when I did the preview with. Uh, did, I do the preview? did I do Utah State preview? I think I did. Uh, I was looking at their points per game. They had very balanced. And the Mia loves Utah State. Yeah, Josh Josh Uduji. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Averages 8.5 points per game off the bench for Utah State. So three for five. They need the last two. Have they won six straight after January 1st? Why, yes, they have. Uh, from February 20th to March 14th, the first game of the Mount West tournament, they won six straight games, five to end the regular season, including wins over San Diego State and New Mexico, and then the first win of their conference tournament. And then do they have two top 75 road wins? Yes, they do. They beat Boise State and UNLV on the road, who both cracked the top 75. So Utah State U- is five for seven. UNLV is a top 75 win, huh? 72nd per count. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Utah I mean, State, yeah, cracks it just barely. That's and that's the formula. If you're going to be a team without a coach who has like made a deep run before, the formula is exactly what Utah State is. Like, do you have a bench guy, and did you win a bunch of games? And Utah State did. So I believe uh, Florida Atlantic is an interesting one, but they qualify mostly because Dusty May made it before, so he got right. they get both the coaching points, and they have the talent. I think that makes sense. That's a dangerous spot for UConn. Uh, Colorado was another one that surprised me. Um, but I guess it makes sense when you look at like they, so they made top 40 in both offense and defense. So we trust their starters. They trust uh, their star, trust their star. They have an NBA player. Uh, Tad Boyle has won the league before he won the league in the pac 12 a couple years ago in 2021. So three for three, he hasn't made a final four. Uh, they did win six straight to end the regular season. They won eight straight actually heading into the pac 12 conference tournament. And then they have a bunch of good road wins as well. They beat uh, Oregon and Washington on the road this year. Do they have someone on the best that averages eight? I don't even think I looked it up because I saw they got to the five threshold, but I can check and see if they make. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of a cheat code for them because I think Cody Williams has been coming off the bench since he got back from injury. So they have an NBA player come off the bench. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. So they're they're six for seven. Colorado may be more dangerous. Uh, than Colorado, interesting. Well, shit. Hopefully that holds up because we're recording this before the first four uh, yeah. playing game. So, like, we need that to, like, hold up. Yeah, sorry we just spent a bunch of time talking about Colorado. They'll probably lose. We – yeah, Car- Card nailed it. All right, uh, so I feel good about that. I think our national champion is going to come from that 15. Dare I say, I think all four final four teams are going to come from that 15. I don't know if you know this, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Was there anyone that went seven for seven? I think it would just be UConn. Cause just because Paint hasn't been to a Final Four, right? Paint hasn't been to a Final Four. Uh, Kelvin Sampson. I'm trying to think where Houston fell short. Um, I, why do I feel like Florida Atlantic's very, very close to seven for seven too? Because they won, they won the league last year. I'm pretty sure. I think they won was, the was was John L the Player of the Year. Yes. Are we positive on that? Because I don't think they have an NBA that NBA guy. Oh, I think he I, I want to say he was co-player of the year, but let me double check that. They're the they're, they're in the American, correct? Yeah. America, America. Actually, I don't Florida Atlantic doesn't have two road wins. Now I'm remembering that. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. They beat right, uh they, they, they beat North Texas, but they didn't get another good road win. So Well Oh, was it, Arizona was a neutral, wasn't it? Arizona was neutral. Yep, doesn't count. No, it, even though the game was in Arizona, wasn't it? Does it count? Doesn't count. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think my money says that uh, all four of our final four teams will come from that pool of fifteen teams: UConn, Houston, Purdue, Auburn, Tennessee, North Carolina, Arizona, Marquette, Baylor, Gonzaga, San Diego State, Kentucky, Colorado, Florida, Atlantic, and Utah State. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right. We'll see if I'm wrong. Uh, the last thing that's interesting to me is Gonzaga qualified and St. Mary's did not. Same, yeah, that I hate that. Interesting. I don't like it either, but it's interesting to draw as a takeaway. We'll see. Okay, to topic number two here. 
Uh, I want three bold predictions from you for the first weekend. We've done our brackets before, but maybe things have changed. Give me three bold predictions on things that will happen this weekend. They can be as simple as this team's going to make the Sweet 16. They can be as complicated as Hunter Dickinson's going to leave mid-game and tweet with 10 minutes left in the game that he's in the portal. Got you. Uh, also, John L. Davis was player of the year in the American, co-player of the year with Young Blood from South Florida. So, Lovely. So, Lovely. Uh, for starters, I'm going to go – the Texas Longhorns are going to make a Sweet 16. That includes them knocking off Tennessee in the next round if they win their first game against whoever plays the playing game. I know it's not bold, but I'm buying DeSue stock. I'm buying A. Smith stock. I'm buying Tyrese Hunter to remember that he's good <laughs> and play well. He has played well in the tournament before with Iowa State. Uh, I, I'm looking for them to make a Sweet 16, and I think a lot of people have them losing first round. Uh, second... Mm. Where I'm gonna go with this? <laughs> I don't know if this is super bold. Who was who? Who did you just say would make a Sweet Sixteen? I'm sorry. Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah. I just let me add that. I'm sorry. I like blanked on that for a second. And then I heard Tyrese Hunter, and I was like, Oh yeah, you're talking about Texas. Uh, my Rodney Terry Jawan Howard theory is cooking right now. Can I can I just get that off for the world to see? So Please. Rodney Terry inherits Chris Beard's team. That's what happened. Rodney Terry immediately goes to an Elite Eight. We don't know what to make of it. He deserves the job. He's a he's a good coach, we think. Good guy. Love it. Jawan Howard inherited John Beeline's players, went to an Elite Eight. You know what happened next year? Kind of underwhelming season. A roster a lot of people liked. Underwhelming season, right? That happened for Rodney Terry this year. That happened for Jawan Howard the year after they made the Elite Eight. Their NCAA tournament draw card. Michigan got Nico Medved's Colorado State team in the first round. And if they won, they got Rick Barnes's Tennessee team. That is the exact draw that Rodney Terry has right now. Colorado State, Nico Medved into Rick Barnes, Tennessee. Jawan <laughs> Howard won two games made a sweet 16 and everybody was like, Oh, he's still got the magic touch. The disappointing season doesn't matter. Rodney Terry. If he does that, the narrative will become, wow, Rodney Terry's a good March coach. We'll see what happens. It was the following year where everything fell apart for Michigan. I think there's, there's a very real chance. Rodney Terry, Juwan Howard parallels are just one for one. I can't believe they have the same draw. That is, that is kind of crazy. And, only you would make those parallels, Gargan. It's what makes you special. I just want you to know that. Second here, St. Mary's is going to make an Elite Eight. These are first weekend predictions. You don't need to. You can't predict beyond the Sweet Sixteen right now. I can't. No. Did you say that? Yeah, this is first weekend predictions. And I just chose to ignore it, didn't I? Sure as hell did. How do you work with me sometimes? Well, I just ignored your entire first prediction, so it's okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, you know, let me let me not get let me not get ahead of myself here. Um, that you can use the prediction still. Just say Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> last one. I am going to stay strong on this. Um, it's between these two. It's a tie right here. Kansas is not losing first round to Sanford, even without McCuller. I want that to be known. They are winning that first round game. It was popular when they had McCuller. It's even more popular now. They will win that game. In conjunction with that, my bonus pick, Wisconsin is winning their first round game against James Madison. Yuck. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I respect those picks. I've heard the reasonings. I just disagree with them strongly. Um, all right. Predictions. Two of the top Eight teams, so all the one seeds and two seeds, are gone by the Sweet 16. Which two? Not going to predict which two. I'm just going to leave it at two. That's a relatively okay. safe prediction. But I think, right. I think, I think North Carolina could lose, and I think Tennessee could lose. Oh, okay. Those are the two. But there could be other two. Marquette could go down to like Florida in the second round. I don't know. I'm going there. Uh, number two for me. Both Alabama and Auburn lose in the first round. 
I've had this prediction for a week. I keep going back to it. I'm not running from the moment. They gave me Charleston over Alabama. They gave me Yale over Auburn. I love the matchup for both teams. Rain Smith's going to hit nine threes. Uh, Yale is going to Danny Wolf Auburn to death, drag Janai Broom out of the paint. They're going down. They're going down, and I want credit. I want this clipped when it happens. And my third and final prediction is that we get a buzzer beater in the Kentucky Oakland game. We get a game winner from some like it's a it is a final possession, need a shot to win the game game and we get a pure good old fashioned buzzer beater from someone. If that's your logic, then you sir are saying that Blake Lantman is going to hit a game winner or Jack Golke is going to hit a game winner with Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham on the floor. It could be Reed Shepard or Rob Dillingham who hit the game winner. I don't know. Sure. Okay. I'm just, I'm saying, I, I know you're saying that, but I'm saying with how your bracket plays on the way you picked, that's what you're siding with. Worst case scenario, it could be uh, in a Duke the Arrow buzzer beater. That would stink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that. Uh, all right. Those were fun. I enjoy those predictions. Final topic. I feel obligated to do this one final time. We all season long have done this about every single week. Our updated final four predictions cart. Uh, you and I have done a thousand streams together, and I think we've held strong to our original final picks since or final four picks since the bracket came out. But you said you haven't filled out a formal bracket yet. So you could go off script here. Who are your official final four teams this season? Kentucky, Creighton, Arizona. UConn. I have UConn playing Kentucky in the national championship game. Kentucky beating UConn to cut down the nets. All right. I like your final four. I have UConn. I have St. Mary's. I have Houston. I have Purdue. I have Purdue beating Houston. I have UConn beating St. Mary's. And I have Purdue beating UConn. We held They're strong. They're doing it for we everyone. Held strong. Yeah, we held strong. We, I was, I thought one of us would waver. I really did since the other day. But it says something about us, I guess. We're stubborn. Is that what it says? That exercise, a, all your teams fit in the exercise. Actually, no, they don't because St. Mary's doesn't, right? They do not. Mm, and Creighton all, yours, all of yours fit, right? I don't think Creighton fits, right? Oh, yeah, not Creighton. Yeah. Should we combine? Should we do the exercise? And if we did the exercise, we would need UConn. Or San Diego State or Auburn or FAU, but we can do UConn. Uh, we would need Houston, Kentucky, Marquette, or Colorado. So you, we could argue about Houston or Kentucky. Yeah, the only one I would have to do is I would have to sub in. I would have to sub in Purdue for Creighton, and I would have to sub in North Carolina, Baylor, or Arizona for St. Mary's. Yeah, Tennessee doesn't fit in this, does it? Right, Tennessee's we went through in. that. Tennessee's in. Yeah. Oh, the, okay. So Tennessee's in. Okay. A lot of teams. Purdue, Purdue, Tennessee, Gonzaga, and Utah State. So P Purdue might have to go through to get to a Final Four. They might have to go through three teams that fit our Final Four criteria just to get there. That's cool. There's even more in UConn's region. <laughs> a little dicey. We'll see. Okay. Fun show today. Fun shows all week. Appreciate your effort on the producer recaps and appreciate everybody watching. We uh, just did the highest views in a day in channel history. Again, we've set that record three times in the last 10 days. Things are very, very good for us right now. We appreciate all the support that everybody has been giving us and uh, seems people are enjoying the content, which is all we ever set out to do. Warms our hearts. One big thing presented by Big B Cart. What do you got? I got to show y'all what I got for my birthday, man. Because, like, this is my first time trying it, too. So y'all are going to see if, like, I have the, the acumen to do this. It's the chopper I was talking about, right? So you get your cutting board. You get your onion. You cut it in half. Make sure you tuck your thumb. When you cut, Greg, you're not paying attention. When you cut, right, you want to tuck tuck your fingers because that, that way you don't cut your fingers or nick your fingers accidentally. So you go going to cut. Through your onion. Catch. Okay. Got half our onion here. Take off the little extra thing on the outside because you don't want the you don't want the skin all up in there, right? I don't want that nastiness. Okay. So you take your half of onion, put it into the cutter device. All right. 
Y'all are going to see this right here. And then you push down and you cut your onion. Wait, I got to make sure it's on there. Hold on. All right. Can I get a countdown, G? No. All right. Three, two, one. Would you look at that, brother? Fre fresh, freshly chopped onions that I'm probably going to put in a little ground turkey tonight when I make my meal. Congratulations. Also, I'm okay. I'm not totally sure here. I'm, I might have broke this. I'm going to move on. Uh, my one big thing is that when you're hosting a watch party, when you're just getting ready to sit on your couch and watch games, you could either use your own chopper to chop your own onions, break said chopper, hurt your finger in the process, and then use those onions on some just average tasting meal that you pretend tastes great. Or you could go to your local Sabaro or the local Sabaro of a town one state over from you that's a good hour and 20 minute drive. Pick up a full size cheese pizza with a side of six breadsticks. Don't forget the sticks and bring them home. Open it up. Get a plate. Have two pieces of cheese and two sticks lined up 10 minutes before tip with a beer in hand. Carter, put the knife down. That's the show this week. Good luck to your team. Have fun watching the madness. We'll have previews and recaps up for every single game along the way. And uh, we'll be back on the Sleepers Podcast on Monday of next week. Thanks for watching.